Hey everyone, today I have some really crazy news for you. It's really cool. If you listen to the podcast pretty regularly, you might have noticed that one of my favorite subjects is parasitic fungus that take control of insects. I just find it incredibly morbid and fascinating how these various species of parasitic fungus can infect an insect, like a fly or a cicada, and then take over its body and manipulate its body like it was a vehicle, so as to allow the fungus to steer it somewhere optimal, produce its fruiting body, and release spores, and thus reproduce, and start this infectious cycle all over again. Now in these typical cases, the parasitic fungus will infect the insect's brain and neural system, and then having seized control of the wetware, it'll force its body to go somewhere. Like in the case of cordyceps infecting an ant, it'll make the ant go high up on a stem or a branch and bite into it to anchor its body at a high elevation. This is to say that the fungus will encourage the insect to position itself in such a way that will optimally encourage fungal spore dispersal, like having the insect raise its wings or position its abdomen in a certain direction or something like that. Now anyway, once the insect has been put in position, it's finally killed, and its body is consumed for nutrients to feed the growth of fruiting bodies and the dispersal of spores. Now in less common cases, the fungus won't necessarily kill the insect right away. It won't just drive it into position and kill it and get going. It'll take its time. It'll spend a fair amount of time in the vehicle stage, where the insect is infected but still alive, and its body is being piloted by the fungus. A new study recently published in the journal BioRx IV examined this kind of infection by the fungus Massaspora as it progressed through the brains and the body of cicadas. The researchers examined three species of Massaspora fungus, the M. cicadina, the M. platypediaea, and the M. levispora. The researchers observed the fungal infection as it progressed through the cicadas, and they took tissue samples to try and identify what kinds of proteins and mRNA and other interesting biomolecules might exist at that point in time in the infected insects. And what they found was really, really fascinating. So in the M. cicadina infected cicadas, the researchers identified a molecule called cathinone, which is a plant amphetamine. In the M. platypediaea and the M. levispora infected cicadas, the researchers identified the mushroom tryptamine psilocybin. In humans and other mammals, psilocybin is a powerful psychedelic chemical that can induce strange sensations and altered mind states, visual and audio hallucinations, and entheogenic experiences. Why these particular mind-altering chemicals are present in the insect and what exactly they're doing there, we don't really understand yet. But the researchers propose a testable explanation. From their abstract, the authors of the paper say, and I quote, The neurogenic activities of these alkaloids provide a hypothetical framework for a chemically induced extended phenotype of massaspora that alters cicada behavior by increasing endurance and suppressing feeding prior to death. Unquote. In other words, the fungus uses these psychotropic chemicals to encourage the infected cicadas to wander around for as long as possible, so that the fungus can increase the time that it spends releasing spores into the ambient air, and thus the area that its spores can cover. Where other funguses cause the insects to hunker down and act as a base, or a, like a building base, for a fruiting body that grows out and then releases spores, these funguses instead use psychedelic alkaloids to suppress eating behaviors and to encourage movement, perhaps by inducing the cicada version of a hysterical fever dream or a terrifying bad trip. This kind of stuff is so metal, it just it makes me really thankful to be a human with modern medicine and not some poor bug being tortured to death through a mind-controlling psychedelic infection. Now, another thing that I wanted to point out really quickly, because it's really cool, is when the researchers mentioned that, quote, hypothetical framework for a chemically induced extended phenotype of massaspora. This is really interesting. So the fungus has its phenotype, which is how its body appears and functions and manipulates and works in the real world, 
It's this macroscopic biomatter that's formed from the genetics. So the genetics would be the genotype, and the organic biomass that that forms, that the living organism, that's the phenotype. And so here, where they talk about this chemically induced extended phenotype, they're literally talking about the fungus extending the reaches of its body, of its sensation and awareness and control over biomatter to the entirety of this cicada's body. The fungus is quite seriously wearing this cicada's body as if it was some kind of mech suit, or like an astronaut's suit or something. It's wearing it as a, a vehicle to help it get around better and do something that it needs to do. In this case, release spores. This concept of the extended phenotype is very roughly analogous to you getting in your car and driving around. When you're driving in a car, whenever you want to turn somewhere, you turn the steering wheel. And so this is like an extension of your body that's helping you move around the physical landscape. In much the same way, the fungus is doing this exact same thing to the cicada. Except where you would be physically manipulating the car, uh, the steering wheel and the gear shift and stuff, this is, this is a mechanically induced extended phenotype of sorts. What the fungus is doing is using chemicals to take over the neural system and the brain of this cicada. And it chemically induces this extended phenotype. And now it's driving around in the cicada's body. Now, I should clarify that we don't know what the insect is perceiving. We don't know if the insect is actually hallucinating in a way that's analogous to a human hallucinating after having eaten magic mushrooms. We'll probably never know what the insect experiences inside of its head in the first person. But in this case, that's probably a good thing, as the insect's terminal experience at the mercy of the Massospora fungus is almost certainly an indescribable horror. 